This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 743, an excerpt from the book Happy Go Money, Spend Smart, Save Right, and Enjoy Life by Melissa Leong. And I am Dan, your host here on the podcast. This is where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. And before we get to today's post, a big thank you to Design Crowd for their support. Design Crowd is a website that helps entrepreneurs, startups, and small businesses, all kinds like accountants, dentists, photographers, marketers, and consultants, outsource or crowdsource custom logo, web, and business card design from designers around the world. For a special $100 VIP offer for our listeners, check out designcrowd.com slash finance to learn more and save up to $100 when you start your next project. That's D-E-S-I-G-N-C-R-O-W-D dot com forward slash finance or simply enter the discount code finance when posting a project on Design Crowd. And today I've got something a little bit different for you. It's actually a book excerpt by an author named Melissa Leong, who is a personal finance writer, on-air personality, speaker, and best-selling author. So we're super excited to have her permission to share some of this book. And I have it linked in this episode's description. For now, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. An excerpt from the book, Happy Go Money, Spend Smart, Save Right, and Enjoy Life by Melissa Leong. The Magic Number. We all need a certain amount of money to be happy, but how much? For those of us who are on the verge of losing our homes, who fret about feeding our children, who cringe when the phone rings because debt collectors may be calling, without question, more money will make us happier. But for the rest of us, before connecting cash with joy, we need to talk about what we mean by happy. Scientists in neuroeconomics, the study of how we make economic decisions, break happiness into two types. One, life satisfaction. An evaluation of your well-being as a whole, the kind of happy where you're pleased with life in general. Two, day-to-day mood, the highs and lows, the joy, stress, sadness, anger, and affection that you experience from one moment to the next, how you feel today, how you felt yesterday, the kind of happy that most of us relate to, the right now happiness. With life satisfaction, the richer people got, the more satisfied they were with their lives. In worldwide studies, people in richer countries reported higher life satisfaction than those in poorer countries. We should also consider that wealthier countries are more politically stable, more peaceful, and less oppressive, which affects well-being. But according to a 2018 Purdue University study, there was a limit, 95,000 US dollars, pre-tax per single-family household. After that, more money didn't mean that you were more satisfied. With day-to-day happiness, the threshold is 60 to $75,000 per household, according to various studies. The 2018 study showed that after these salaries are met, life satisfaction and day-to-day happiness actually slightly decrease with more money. What the what? Well, apparently, when all of our basic needs are met, we become driven by other desires, such as chasing after more material stuff and comparing ourselves to others, which make us unhappy. Also, high incomes can come with high demands, like more working hours, more stress, and less time with family and for leisure. This doesn't mean that we should all go out and try to make exactly $75,000 a year, our so-called feel-good financial sweet spot. The studies are averages, and we all need different things to be happy. But all of us find joy in some simple things, kisses, laughter, getting ID'd over the age of 25. Marketing professor Hal Hirschfeld once told me, quote, even if I have an amazing car in my driveway, a huge house, and a big fat income, That doesn't necessarily mean that I'll be happier on a day-by-day basis because the types of things that influence happiness are who I interact with, how I spend my time, and the things that I do, end quote. Think of some of your happiest times in the past week. Were you spending it with people? Were you taking time to enjoy an activity, going for a run or catching up with a good friend? Would a wad of cash have made those moments that much better? Probably not. If you answered yes to the latter question, how much more do you need to be happy? Listen on. Your magic number is probably wrong. Let's do an exercise together. How happy are you on a scale of one to 10? Now think about how much money you have in the bank, your salary. How much more money would you need to be a perfect 10? Michael Norton, who teaches at Harvard Business School and co-authored Happy Money, The Science of Smarter Spending, 
surveyed average income earners and high net worth Britons with a net worth of more than a million dollars. And he asked them those questions. Everybody said two to three times as much money, Norton told me. Why is that a problem? I asked, estimating the same for myself. Quote, that's a problem because people at a million dollars said, if I had three million dollars, I'd be a perfect 10. Except that people who had three million said, if I had nine million, I'd be a perfect 10. End quote. Basically, happiness is on a sliding scale. Think about how much this sucks. No matter what you have, you'll always want more. Even if you have millions, When you find the gold at the end of the rainbow, the pot is just too small, and then you're off again, chasing more rainbows. It's like a curse, really. It also takes the fun out of my childhood dream of winning a million-dollar lottery. That was the very first fantasy I ever had, winning a jackpot and marrying one of the new kids on the block, anyone but Danny. I'd have fancy clothes, and we'd eat at Red Lobster every weekend. Still my idea of a hot date today. But despite what we may think, winning the lottery doesn't buy you a one-way ticket to Euphoria Town. Take this famous study from 1978, where researchers asked two very different groups about their happiness. Recent Illinois state lottery winners who scored $50,000 to a million dollars in the lottery, and recent victims of catastrophic accidents who were now paraplegic or quadriplegic. They asked the lottery winners and the accident victims to rate how happy they were at that stage of their lives, before the life-altering event, and how happy they expected to be in a few years. They asked them to rate how pleasant they found simple activities, talking with a friend, watching TV, eating breakfast, buying clothes, getting a compliment, etc. Seriously, who's happier, the person cruising in the Lamborghini or in the wheelchair? Yes, the lottery winners were happier in the moment. The winners reported feeling more present happiness. But the people with disabilities rated their future happiness higher. They also enjoyed the simple things in life more. They had more appreciation for the mundane pleasures of things such as hearing a joke or reading a magazine. Actually, research shows a link between high income and a reduced ability to savor small pleasures. Experts blame it on hedonic adaptation, our tendency to just get used to whatever we have. Even a dramatic life improvement eventually becomes the new normal. You don't smell the roses because they're everywhere, any time of the day. And research has shown that our inner thermostats are set somewhere between happiness and sadness. It can rise and fall depending on circumstance, but it generally returns to that baseline. So if you were a miserable moaner before hitting the jackpot, you'll likely just be a rich, miserable moaner. In another real-life example, Marcus Person, who created Minecraft and sold it to Microsoft for $2.5 billion in 2014, reportedly bought a $70 million mansion complete with a candy wall, vodka, and tequila bars, designer fire extinguishers, because safety first, fashion second, and 15 bathrooms equipped with $5,000 remote control operated toilets with air deodorizers and heated seats. But in 2015, he tweeted, quote, hanging out in Ibiza with a bunch of friends and partying with famous people, able to do whatever I want, and I've never felt more isolated, end quote. In another tweet, he said, quote, the problem with getting everything is you run out of reasons to keep trying and human interaction becomes impossible due to imbalance, end quote. Now, this could be super depressing to you. For me, it's reassuring. It tells me that no single event or any material thing or external factor ultimately defines my happiness. Human beings are adaptable. A million dollars or a misfortune over time can become the new normal. Sure, with money, you'll enjoy stylishly fighting a fire with your Louis Vuitton extinguisher, but the riches may also make old pleasures seem less enjoyable. So remember, there's a better use of your money than playing the lottery. The odds of winning the Powerball jackpot prize are 1 in 292 million, and odds are that more money won't guarantee that your days will be happier anyway. You just listened to an excerpt from the book Happy Go Money, Spend Smart, Save Right, and Enjoy Life by Melissa Leong. And again, I have the book linked in this episode's description. You can always find the description or show notes at oldpodcast.com. And thank you so much again to Melissa for letting us share part of her book. And thank you again to Design Crowd for their support. Design Crowd has over 650,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. Get the perfect custom design every time. It's simple. Just post a brief describing the design you need then Design Crowd will invite its designers to submit, and within hours, you'll receive your first design. 
Over the course of three to 10 days, a typical project will receive 60 to 100 or more designs from designers all around the world. You simply pick the best design and approve payment. If you're not happy, no worries because DesignCrowd has a money back guarantee. So try it out. You can crowdsource just about any creative project on DesignCrowd. And for a special $100 VIP offer for our listeners, check out designcrowd.com slash finance to learn more and save up to $100 when you start your next project. That's D-E-S-I-G-N-C-R-O-W-D dot com forward slash finance or simply enter the discount code finance when posting a project on Design Crowd. And that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for being here and being a subscriber to the show. And I will be back with you tomorrow for the Thursday show where your optimal life awaits.